back for another session of our Misila Yishanim. We stopped uh, last week in the middle of the conversation about Nikiyut, and he was giving us an examples of uh, the three uh, major sins that most people uh, fail with. Just to give an example, um, you know, of what type of, um, you know, inspection everything needs, uh, you know, and uh, he was talking about over here, um, you know, speaking uh, in, in proper improper statements so we'll pick up i think we stopped right in the middle over here so when it comes to hearing things that are improper you hear something and you don't say anything about it so hashem's anger will fall upon that person all our um senses need to be clean and pure in a zenut anything to do with illicit relations. And somebody whispers to you and says, when they say, talking about improper speech, right? I'm meaning, uh, yeah, you know, the rabbis talk about it. It's really only, uh, it's, a, it's a fence to keep you away from sinning. <laughs> It's told about someone who is short to anger, you know, but anyone else, you could really say what you want. No, someone who just said it as a joke, right? He's not going to let what he said really come into play, into action. That's not true. Ignore this person. What you're saying, that's your Yetzara talking. The rabbis brought a pasuk to uh, support their opinion. Right? And because uh, Hashem will not be pleased with the youth. He won't have mercy. They're all talking Hanufa, nonsense, umera, or bad statements. They call pe dover nevala. Everybody's mouth is speaking the bulpe, improper speech. This pasuk is not talking about you know the three cardinal sins. Ela Hanufa. It's talking about when you give uh, over, over, uh, overly, when you overly praise somebody, when right? you kiss up to somebody. It's talking about, obviously, we know what that is, and Nibul Pe, improper speech. All three of these come from the sin of your mouth. Right? And so about this speech, these sins, Hashem is not pleased with the youth. The truth is, like our rabbis taught us, speaking improper speech is equal to the actual improper actions that someone would do, you know, illicit relations uh, on in a sexual manner. Well, nibul pe is the equal of that. You know that that um, that the highest level of of life is the midaber, right? The human man, the human that we're able to speak and communicate, right? Our neshama is what Hashem blew into our nostrils, and we use that that uh, you know that power that God gave us, right? That raises us up above all other creatures. When we use that gift the wrong way, so that's the erva, that's the arayot of your mouth. Mishum zenut Right, it's asur. All these side things that might lead up to, you know, the improper, uh, improper action are also going to be asur. Right, there's no actual penalty of you know being cut off from, uh, from future existence. Omitat bedin for saying something improper. Nevertheless, asurim hem isur atzmam. They have their own, they're still on their own isur. Milevad, on their own, heyotam gam ken gormim omevi'im eta isur harashi al atzmam. Because they cause the person, right? You start whispering sweet nothings in the ear of the person that you're not allowed to have relations with, and then things lead to something else, and we know where that, where that, where that ends up. Then. And the rabbis tell us, in a potropos la right? There's no, uh, there's no such thing as uh, you'll be able to control yourself when it comes to this kind of scenario. We talked about before the nazir, the whole, we talked about that last week, that the Torah required not only that the nazir, when he's a sur from wine, but he's also a sur 
from anything that has to do with grapes, the skin, the seeds, everything is asur from the psukim from the Torah. And he said that that was the model um, that, that uh, the Torah taught that specifically for the rabbis when they need to enact enactments to make sure. And if it applies to all sins, all kinds of lotases have these other, you know, side um, isurim that prevent you from getting to the real isur. He took this example from Nazir, and that's what he's mentioning over here. Okay. Ubinyana machshava, when it comes to thought. Okay. Shekvar amarnu betchila habaraita shelanu. So when it comes to improper thoughts now, he's going into. So, um, you know, the rabbis, the, the Gemara and Yoma says, uh, thinking about the sin is actually worse than the actual sin. Because you might think that, oh, yeah, because I'm just thinking about it, it's allowed, it's okay. Uh, you know, and then you don't feel guilty about it. And then one thing leads to another, and before you know it, you fell into the trap. Um, and therefore, the, it's actually worse because at least you have guilt when you know you're doing something wrong, right? Then, then at least you have a chance to make teshuvah. But when you think you're not doing anything wrong, there's never a chance for you to make teshuvah. Why would you make teshuvah? You're not doing anything wrong. Umikra malehu, it's an open pasuk. He says, "Toavat Hashem machshavot ra." Right? And Hashem looks at the evil, you know, bad thoughts as an abomination. So far, I spoke to this point, two of the major sins, right? And for him, right? They're very easy to fall into these two sins, right? And the first two that he spoke about was Gezel and then Arayot, he says, okay? And now the Madrega Shilishit is going to give one third example. Ahara Gezel the Arayot, where the, the third one is going to bring up, this desire that people have to eat things that are asur. Right? Whether it is the actual thing that's not kosher, the taref item, or the inyan ta'arovotehem, the mixture of this with the taref item. basar right? Maybe it's a milk and meat mixture. Fats that are not allowed to be eaten, blood that's not allowed to be eaten. The inyan bishule goyim, cook food that was cooked by goyim that we're not supposed to have. Inyan giule goyim, that's the, using the pots of the goyim that has the flavors in the pot. And you know, you're going to cook your food in there now. It's going to come and make your food unkosher. Yen nisachim, stam yenam, different type wine. Yain nisach mamash, wine that was used for avodazara. Stam yenam is just unwind wine made by the goyim. That is also asur b'hana'a. All these have a, a ta'ava. People have a desire. And he says, "Kol ele hanikiut b'hem tzarich dikduk gadol v'tzarich chizuk." Right to be naki, to be clean, which what this is the, the attribute that we're discussing here in this chapter. In order to be able to stay away from these, takes a lot of, of restraint. Ki yesh ta'ava talev hamitavim ma'achalim tovim. Who doesn't like? To go out to a delicious meal in a good restaurant and have this, you know, being served these delicacies, right? So the chisron hakis, it's expensive. Will be isure hatarovot v'chayotzeh b'zeh. You have issues with mixtures. Upratehem rabim. There's many details. Kechol dinayim hayedoim amavorim b'sefer b'sefer haposkim. Go learn the chot tarovot. It's very very complicated. All the mixtures and things that becomes asur. It's not just a walk in the park. Yeah. Someone who is going to take it lax, you know, in a place where the rabbis say we should be stringent. So he's causing for himself, uh, you know, his destruction. Okay, I'm going to quote a, uh, a midrash. It says, Do not, right? Do file yourself with them, you will become tame, right? So he says, Atem bam, right? If you are going to, you know, defile yourself, become impure. So then that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to become tameh. What does that mean? That the, the unkosher food, will it becomes actually part of your body. What happens when you eat something, right? Your body digests. Absorbs the nutrients, so you're taking in, and this actual unkosher item becomes part of you. And he's saying, uh, it could, if you continue to do that, it could have potentially happen. 
That's it. At some point, it got the point of no return where Hashem doesn't want to be involved in that kind of a body anymore. And he's going to leave. Means, don't understand the Pasuk as you become Tameh, Ela Tamtem, you become Tam Tam, like Timtum. Timtum Alev, it closes your mind, it shuts you down, you become dumb, you become unable to see Kedusha, you become unable to understand Torah. It weaks, it takes, makes your heart closed. What leaves you is the actual, right, the supreme knowledge, the real knowledge. This divine assistant, this dying, divine clarity that Hashem gives to those that are particular, proper, proper behavior, that's not going to be there for this person. Right? God gives wisdom. He, be, he is left like a bema, and he's an animal, like I mentioned before. He loses that elevated status as a human being. He becomes homer, he becomes materialistic. Meshuka He becomes stuck, uh, you know, like in the mud in the in the uh, you know this world of materialism. Regarding all other. Uh, you know, improper uh, things that you're not allowed to eat that are asur. Yeterot baze al kola isurim. They have this, uh, you know, above all other isurs. Kevan shehem nichnasim begufo shel haadam mamash. So we mentioned before, v'naasim basar mi besaro becomes part of your flesh. Uchde lehodienu shelo behemot hatemeot or ashikatsim bevadem temeim. So don't think it's just the unkosher animals or, you know, bugs and, you know, the creepy crawly things we're not allowed to eat, right? Even an animal that is a kosher animal but was not slaughtered properly or it had some kind of blemish that made it unkosher, all right? Right? That we must make a distinction between that which is impure and that which is pure. The rabbis explained for us. I don't need to tell you, you know, that, that don't eat a you know don't eat a donkey uh, you know because the donkey is not kosher and the cow is kosher. That's not what the pasuk's for. Why do I have to tell you between that which is pure and impure? Okay, meaning both of those, these, the Tameh and the Tahor, was something that was mutar for you to eat. But what's the difference between them? In order for an animal to be considered kosher, well, first of all, it had to have the signs of kashrut, which is what we're talking about now. So it's a para, it's, a, you know, it's one of the animals that we're allowed to eat. But then it needs to be slaughtered properly. It has to have, make sure it doesn't have any blemishes. And sl- proper slaughter is to have the majority of the esophagus um, and the windpipe. The kane is the windpipe. And uh, you need to have, uh, for if it's an animal, majority of both of those slaughtered. So he's telling you, nishhat ruboshel kane, nishhat hatsyo. If I cut exactly half, the animal is not kosher. And vechama ben rubol hatsyo. How much extra do I need to add on to the half that I've slaughtered already to make it kosher? Milo asara, the hair's breath. A tiny amount, right? Ad kan which means that the difference between kosher and unkosher is minuscule. Yet the penalty is still there. If you didn't do, oh, I just missed it by a breath, doesn't matter, right? The amru lashon ze amaram, the rabbis complete over there their statement, and they say, the chama belubo vechule laharot kama nifla koach ha mitzvah. So to, to teach you a lesson in Musar, how unbelievable the power of a mitzvah is, Shuhuta Sa'aram of Deal Ben Tum'ah, right? The difference between the mitzvah and the sin is mamash, letaura mamash, chuta sa'ara, the hair's breadth, anything. Because a, a second I go over 50%, it's kosher. Anyone who has a brain in his head, Yahshov Isureha Ma'achal, ke ma'achalim ha'arsiyim. You should look at food that's not allowed to be eaten like it's poison. Eris is poison. Or it's food that someone put poison into it, right? Right? If it actually happened that someone poisoned a meal, 
Hayakel Adam al Atzmol Echol Mimenu? Would anyone say, ah, nothing's going to happen? I'll eat it. I'm sure I'm fine. Right? If I had even a tiny inkling of suspicion that there was something wrong with this food, would I eat it? I feel even a tiny one. But Why would I take a chance? I'll eat something else, right? Sorry, if he will be lenient, what are you going to tell about such a guy? Majnun case, right? Stupid guy. This unkosher food is poison for your soul and for your body, for your heart. So who would be this person that would take this lightly if he has any brain? About this idea it says, You put, you swallowing swords. You're sword swallower. You're swallowing a knife, right? Because of your baal nefesh, because you had a ta'ava and you swallowed the knife. Okay. He okay. says, now what Ramchal says, we're going to speak now. Al hataim hamidin hamidin Doesn't necessarily mean blind. Oh my God. I hope I wasn't muted this whole time. <laughs> Whoa, that's not good. I've been talking for 20 minutes. I just realized my film mind. Oh boy. Okay. Anyway, I do have the recording uh, on the uh, uh, on my phone. So we'll be able to share with everybody. So the voice recording at least is there, but I'm not sure about the uh, Zoom recording there. Um, anyway, so in the meantime, let's see if anyone sent me a message. No, okay, hopefully it was, it was on. So anyway, um, we're talking about sins that are, um, you know, in, done in a group. When people are together, the kibbutzam, they get together, right? Kegon, honaat devarim, speaking, right? They're making fun of people or making same saying things that make them feel bad. Halbanat panim is embarrassing them. Hachshalat ha'iver ba'itza, someone who is, you know, blind, not necessarily blind mamash, but rather doesn't know, you know, and he's asking for advice about this particular item, and you you fail him. You intentionally, you know, stop, make him stumble. Rechilut, right? That's lashonara, sin'a, nekama, right? So they're taking back revenge and Hate, shivuot, swearing, dvar sheker, lying, chilul Hashem. All these are things that are done in public with a bunch of people together. Who can say that they didn't do any of these? That I'm pure from this. There's many branches to these sins. To be careful from these is very, very difficult. Right? Making, saying things that make people feel bad. Besides that he's going to get embarrassed from it. Which means, is not necessarily that he's going to be embarrassed from it. He's just going to feel bad about it. It might be true. It might be something, but it's just going to make him, it's not going to make him feel good. And of course, we're not talking about saying something you can, that he's going to be embarrassed. If I do something to him that, that's going to cause him to become embarrassed, Right? If someone made teshuvah, you don't tell the Baal teshuvah, oh, I remember, oh, you big shot, you think you're a religious guy, I remember when you used to do, right, this, this, and that. You, know, you don't say that to somebody. If he was sick, right? You don't say to him like his uh, Yov's friends told him, Zichorna mihuna ki avad. Right? Do you know anybody that was uh, that uh, you know that's uh, that's pure that's suffering like this? Meaning, you know, you did it wrong, it's your fault type of thing. If he, a guy who is, you know, he's a truck driver, right? example, over here, Hamarim means the guy that drives donkeys from town to town to do deliveries. So for our language, it would be a truck driver, and they were uh, they want to buy wheat. 
right? Viodea bo sheilo machar tevuah miyamav. I can't mislead him. Tell him, yeah, yeah, this guy over there, he sells wheat, but you know that guy never ever ever sells wheat. Right? Kvar amru zechronam lebracha gadol onaat devarim. Right? Saying things that make people feel bad is worse than. It's a little smaller here. Okay. Um, thank you for letting me about the audio. Okay, good. All right, I was worried about that. So it's good most of the time. Fine. Um, Gatol onaat devarim me onaat mamon. Saying bad things, right, to people, right, is worse than onaat mamon, than money. So onaat mamon is when you overcharge somebody in a business transaction. Now that, the psukim about onaat mamon, don't say, and you should be fearful from God. But when it talks about onaat devarim, it's saying bad things to people, it does say, be fearful from God. And therefore, speaking things that are going to hurt somebody is actually worse than than, than hurting their money. The koshikin, imu berapim, right? Of course, let me tell you that it's worse if it's in public, Someone who embarrasses a friend in public has no share in the world to come. Chizda says that you know all the gates of Shamaim when it comes to Tefilot were locked after the destruction of Beit Hamikdash, except for the people that are calling out because of Ona'a. That Hashem listens to. Any time that needs someone don't need to get punished Hashem does it through a medium, he does it a messenger, except for the person who transgressed Ona'a. That one Hashem goes after the person himself. There are three people that the you know the uh, curtains are not closed in front of them. They can go in there whenever they want to talk to Hashem. One of the things is is this. Again, someone who was uh, the uh, the uh, victim of onaa. The afil ledvar mitzvah amara katu vocheach tocheach et amitecha, right? And even when it comes to a mitzvah, you, you have an obligation to tell your friend when you see him doing something wrong. Maybe even if he's going to be embarrassed, I should tell him. Talmud lomad velotisa alav chet. No, you should not be carrying a sin for him. So you don't tell him if you know he's going to be embarrassed in public. You tell him later. On the side, not in public. These are all just examples to show you that how far the warning of this transaction of these type of sins goes and how serious the sin is. When it comes to giving advice to people, we learned over there, right? It literally means in front of a blind person, do not put stumbling block. Like I explained before, it doesn't mean blind Davka, he can't see. In this particular area that we're discussing, he's blind, he doesn't know. If he asks you, so-and-so, she, uh, you know, is okay, I can take her out on a date, she's a good girl, it's a good family, she's allowed to marry the Kohen. Don't tell him, yeah, great, perfect, yeah, and you know that it's not true, right? Someone asks you for advice. Don't give him improper advice. Don't tell him, you know, sell the field and buy a donkey. You're doing, you know why? Because you want the field. So you want to go in there and uh, tell him to sell it so you can buy it. Maybe you'll tell yourself, no, but I'm giving you good advice. Right, that's why it says that, that it's, it's gathered over to your internal, to your insides, to your conscience. It says in the pasuk, "Fear God." Right, whether I'm a party to this transaction or I'm, you know, I'm biased. Or I'm unbiased. My obligation is to give him pure. And truthful advice. You should know that the Torah, what the Torah foresaw into the future what the, the cheaters are, are trying to do, what their intentions are. Okay? He says, We're not dealing with the tipesh, right? 
silly people, dumb people. Shiatsu Itza Shir Atami for Semit Viniglit. Right? The Torah is not going to warn you to give uh, uh, you know, advice that's improper when everybody knows that what you're telling them is not true. Right? That's not what we're warning. The Torah is warning the person that's conniving what looks like good advice. And it really isn't because he has ulterior motives. That's the warning. If you look at it at first glance, it might seem like it's actually a good idea, like they might profit from this. But at the end, what's going to be the outcome is not what it seems. It's going to be actually detrimental to him. Really, it's for the benefit of the person giving the advice. That's what we talk about. Right? That's why it says, Oh, we're giving good advice. It's handed over to your heart. You know what your real intentions are. People transgress this every day. They're running after the desire for, for, the, for money. Right? Cursed is the one who misleads the blind on the path. What's the obligation of a person who's honest, straight? When a person comes to ask for advice, you tell him what you would have done for yourself. Don't think about, you know, your only intention should be for the person that you're, talk, that you're talking to. No other benefit, no side benefits. No matter how far or how close. And if he sees that maybe he's going to get damaged with that type of advice. And if you can tell him to his face, tell him, tell him. If you have no way, you don't know, then again, keep your mouth closed. Don't say anything. No matter what you do, you can't tell him anything that's really not for his benefit. Right? Unless the guy who's asking you, right, is has bad intentions, right? So then, yeah, then you should have, you, you should Try to trick him into it to try to do something good by mistake instead of letting him do something that's not allowed. al ikesh patal, right? Someone who's bent, right? He's uh, trying to be uh, a wise guy. So you nitpatel, you 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 join him, right? You do what he does. He does. Vechushai ha'arki yochiach. Did I skip a page? Vechushai ha'arki yochiach. That's the end of the pasuk. Okay, fine. Okay, good. When it comes to, right, this is Lashon Hara, Lashon Hara, two different types. One is true, one is not true. Rechilut is true, Lashon Hara is not true. Kvar Humro Noda. We all know about the, the uh, you know, how serious the sin is. Kodil Anafav Kirabu Me'od, right? The branches of the sin are many, many, many. Achikvar Gazru, the rabbis tell us, Omer Chachamin Zuchram Nebracha, Right, the, it said Rubam begezel miutam be'arayot vechulam be'avak lashon hara. Everybody has this problem. Okay, ve'amru hechidam miavak lashon hara. Tell me what it means that you know this dust the you know, of lashon hara, the avak, the small things that people don't recognize to be. Kigon de Amar hecha mishtakach nura. Right, where can I find the fire? Ela be planya, so and so's house, right? Oh, she saper tovato, right? Shall if ne son av, you're gonna take, you know, benefit some of the say some good things about somebody in front of people that hate him. The whole kayose baze, right? Af al pi shener im dvarim kalim, even though it looks like you know it's not a big deal, it's very light, it's easy. Ur hokim menarechilut, it's very far from what we're calling, you know, rechilut things that are asur. Hine be emet. Me'avak, shelohim. These are some of the types of the uh, chilut. Klaloshu davar harbed darkim darachim la yetzer. There are many ways that yetzer can 
make you falter. Anything that can come have an outcome of damage or embarrassment to your friend. Whether it's in front of him or not in front of him. That would be an issue of that Hashem hates and is disgusted by. Anybody, again, who speaks Lashonara, it's as if he's denying the existence of God. Again, it's the same idea I mentioned before. When you're using your mouth to sin, that is what, what raises us above of all other humans. And therefore, you're kofer by ikar. Hashem is the one who put his nishama inside of you and you're using it to sin. Right? Those that speak Lashonara about his friend, Right in private, in private, paseter. That's the one Hashem is going to destroy. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Inshallah, we'll have a beautiful week. I wish everybody good things. Say good things about your friends and have health and happiness and success. And Bezat Hashem will continue again next week.